Another major severe weather outbreak appears likely today across the Ohio Valley Midwest in the Dixie Alley, where significant damaging winds, very large hail, and strong tornadoes are possible. And then later this week, we are expecting another big storm system that could bring additional severe weather to areas in the Great Plains. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And right now, we still have a large storm system that is currently moving moving across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. And this brought a slew of damaging winds, large hail, and even multiple tornadoes yesterday. And we unfortunately had a couple of destructive tornadoes, one of which was in Oklahoma and another one in Arkansas. This storm system is continuing to move east, and we are expecting another round of severe weather this afternoon and evening across parts of the Ohio Valley, Midwest, and back through the Dixie Alley, where all hazards of severe weather will be in play. And over the last couple of days, we've had major severe weather outbreaks. And on Sunday, we had over 30 tornadoes reports across the central and southern plains. A major tornado outbreak happened on Sunday with multiple wedge tornadoes as well in parts of Kansas. Additionally, over 100 wind and hail reports were across the board here with our severe weather event on Sunday. And then yesterday, we had over 440 different storm reports. At least five tornadoes have been reported. But again, there were way more than five tornadoes yesterday. We had multiple on radar that were confirmed as well. At least 200 wind and hail reports as well, making it another severe weather outbreak yesterday. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next couple of days, and we'll begin with today, which is tossing trampolines on Tacos Tuesday. The Storm Prediction Center has a large level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk of severe weather in place along the Mississippi River Valley, back into Kentucky, Tennessee, also northern Alabama, Georgia, and as well as Mississippi are all included in this risk of significant severe weather for today. The main concern for today will actually be damaging winds, and notice the Storm Prediction Center has put out a 45% chance with an 25 mile radius of damaging winds and you might think isn't this a moderate risk of severe weather well technically if this was a hatched area meaning significant damaging winds are in play then this would actually be a, a moderate risk of severe weather at least for now it is not hatched but i could see this being hatched later today and that could lead to a moderate risk of severe weather purely for our wind threat there's also a chance for very large hail especially out of our initial supercells right along the mississippi river valley so get ready if you're over in memphis for large hail back through paducah and also near Cape Girardeau is where we could have some significant hail today. And unfortunately, there is another risk for strong and potentially long track tornadoes this afternoon. It's going to be contingent on our morning convection clearing out fast enough. But if it does, we could easily have at least a few tornadoes that are strong today. And this could also be upgraded to a moderate risk. I'm not ruling that out either. I think the chances of a moderate risk of tornadoes are low. But if we don't really have much morning convection this morning, all hazards will be on the table and it would be a much more elevated threat, especially here in western and central Tennessee from Nashville back through Memphis and also across parts of northern Mississippi and also northeastern Arkansas. And then heading into Wednesday, our risk of severe weather is way lower back over on the East Coast where there is a marginal threat of severe weather stretching from West Virginia back through Tallahassee, Florida, where isolated damaging winds and perhaps a weak tornado are going to be possible, mainly back over in Virginia, North Carolina, and also West Virginia. Now let's go into more specific details about today's severe weather event, beginning with our significant tornado parameter values. And believe it or not, we do have a line of storms out there already this morning this will be producing a potential mainly for isolated damaging winds but there is a low chance of a tornado or two as this line continues to push across tennessee and kentucky now eventually by the afternoon after this line of storms moves out we are expecting the atmosphere to destabilize and our environment should get favorable enough again this afternoon right along the mississippi river valley to produce the potential for more tornadoes especially in this area here i think this is our greatest chance wherever our line of storms this morning doesn't really go through i think is where the greatest threat of tornadoes is also going to exist. However, if we get destabilization quick enough up here near Memphis, there could also be a potential for very large hail damaging winds and even a few tornadoes. So that's something we need to watch for very closely is the morning convection and that should set the stage for what's going to happen this afternoon. And our tornado threat does remain at least elevated all the way into the early to mid evening hours across Alabama, Tennessee, and also Kentucky where a few tornadoes will remain possible. And then eventually into the early overnight hours, the tornado threat is much lower as these storms continue to push to the east towards the the Appalachian Mountains. So here's the timing for today. A line of storms will continue to move across Tennessee and Kentucky this morning into the very early afternoon hours, mainly with a threat of damaging winds. And then eventually by the time we get closer to two to three o'clock is when we expect a bunch of storms to try to initiate near the Mississippi River Valley with the initial concern of very large hail and damaging winds. But the tornado threat will really quickly ramp up, especially with discrete supercells. But I think most storms will be semi-discrete. This is actually not linear. These are semi-discrete supercells, which will be 
rotating and producing the potential for tornadoes. Eventually, by 4 to 5 o'clock, this line continues to push to the east with many storms still semi-discrete, likely a little bit more linear on our northern half of our storms, and then the southern half will likely be more semi-discrete back over near Memphis and also in northern Mississippi. By 6 to 7 o'clock, this line continues to push across central Kentucky, also near Nashville, Tennessee, back over towards Knoxville, and then eventually by 8 to 9 o'clock, we're still talking about at least some scattered severe weather, especially in eastern Tennessee and eastern Kentucky. By about 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, severe weather will continue mainly over near Knoxville. We're talking about damaging winds, very low tornado risk by this point, and then damaging winds and a low tornado risk will continue back over in Alabama and Mississippi with any remaining storms, and then by early tomorrow, all these storms are clearing out and moving off to the east, where an isolated risk of severe weather will continue on Wednesday. And then after today, our weather pattern is going to be changing a lot. So as we go into the middle and end of this week, our jet stream will become a little bit more meridional, which is actually going to allow for another storm system to eject over the Rockies as we go into Friday and Saturday. And this could lead to more severe weather back over in parts of the Great Plains, the Midwest, and also back through the Dixie Alley. On the East Coast, troughing will continue, which will bring cold air back out of Canada, which means some nicer weather is going to be in place for the Ohio Valley and the East Coast, along with some rainfall. Eventually by Saturday and Sunday, that trough will eject. It's not going to be as strong as the one that we just had over the last few days, but it will be strong enough for at least some scattered severe weather, I think, this weekend. And then by early next week, look at our jet stream. It is looking very interesting, very dipped down here off, the, off to the West Coast. We got a little closed low that'll move over into California and also another big dip in the jet stream back over in the Great Lakes. Once again, colder weather is going to be in store for those over in the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley in the Northeast. Also with rainfall, maybe a little bit of isolated severe weather as well. This will be a storm system to keep an eye on if it's able to intensify as we go into early to mid next week. We could have a trough ejection that could also lead to another potential significant severe weather event sometime around Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. But I do want to point out it is still very far out and things could definitely change. But I do think generally speaking, our weather pattern will continue to at least stay semi-active throughout the rest of May and also into early June. So here's the future radar for the next several days. As we go into Thursday and Friday, this low pressure system will continue to spin in the northeast with some heavy rainfall. Not really much severe weather left over on Thursday or Friday. Eventually by Saturday, that low pressure system moves over the Rockies, which should bring a potential for at least some severe weather on Saturday and Sunday. It's going to depend on capping back over in the southern plains, but if we do end up having that cap erode, there will likely at least be some hail, wind, and maybe a couple of tornadoes. Another thing to keep an eye on is our jet stream will be coming well out of the northwest, which could also favor a mesoscale convective system sometime on Saturday or Sunday, which means a line of thunderstorms with all hazards of severe weather on the table, but mainly a wind threat uh, back over in the Ohio Valley. And then eventually by late Sunday into Monday, our high pressure system at the surface will build across the Great Plains. It'll keep areas like the Gulf Coast and the East Coast active. And then by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week, which is the very end here of May, we'll likely start to see the return of more severe weather across the Great Plains and the Midwest. But if anything does change between now and then, we'll obviously let you know. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And again, we'll be live later today covering the severe weather outbreak in the Ohio Valley on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when we go live later today.